live at Buckingham Palace with Princess Diana's rock and royal insider Paul Burrell. And Queen Consort Camilla will be crowned simply queen at this Saturday's coronation, but the rift between her two beloved stepsons is wider than ever after Harry's bombshell oversharing of deeply private family moments, including a physical fight at Frogmore Cottage in his memoir, Spare, and a string of high-profile interviews earlier this year. Now, the Daily Telegraph's well-connected royal editor, Victoria Ward, is today reporting that the Duke does not expect to have any personal conversations with his father on the day of the coronation. He is also not expecting to have any meaningful conversations with the Prince and Princess of Wales, such as the gulf between the two brothers, that multiple sources has said they cannot see how the relationship will ever be repaired. And as I write in a new Mail Online column today, we know that until her dying breath, the late Diana was vociferously opposed to the idea of Camilla becoming Queen, with the mere mention of the prospect reportedly filling her with equal levels of punch in the guts, dread, immense upset and visceral anger. But I'm also aware that the coronation of King Charles will mean that sooner or later, Diana's eldest son, William, will too be crowned King, ensuring her legacy will continue through her treasured children, or one of them, at least. And I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Diana's former butler, close personal confidant. Of course, he's worked for the royal family for many, many years, Paul Burrell. So look, Paul, so much uh, to unpick on this tonight. Mm. Firstly, what do you make of this revelation in the Telegraph, mm. that it looks like Harry is going to have no conversation yeah. with Charles or William on the day of the coronation? I never expected that would happen anyway, because Char uh, Harry's going to be in and out in a second, and he's going to be on the aeroplane back to California before they even settled with the crown inside the palace. No, this is a quick visit. You know he's keeping his foot in the door. His relevance is being royal. He's actually coming to the coronation to please his father. His father wants him to be there, mm. and he wants his two sons to witness the biggest day of his life. And that's quite right, and that's how it should be. Um, but Harry has no role in the coronation and will be sat six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows behind his family. And the, and the atmosphere inside the Abbey is going to be ice cold. Towards him? Towards Harry, because they do not forgive him mm. for throwing family members under no, the bus. Mm. Now look, I actually quoted you in my column for Mail Online today, because you know I've had to weigh this up for such mm. a long time. I felt deep yeah. unease about the idea of Queen Camilla for some time. Me too. But for the future of the monarchy, yes. we've got to go with this. We have we? to accept the king and queen we have to because I'm a monarchist mm. and we have to cross that bridge with Charles and Camilla to get to William and Catherine because you see I'm looking over their shoulders I'm looking at this short reign mm. that will eventually end up with King William on the throne with his beautiful wife Catherine mm. beside him that ring on a queen's finger and Diana's son King that is what I'm looking for and that is the future and I have to go with the plan I, you know Diana's colours a nail to my mast. Mm. Always will be. I always be loyal and true to her and I will always support her and William and Catherine and in a way Harry because I know Harry's blinkered. I know she's cast a spell on him but he's still Diana's son and I feel for him because I don't think his heart has ever mended. One of our guests earlier in the evening was speculating on what Diana would have done mm. this weekend if she were alive, and they actually thought that it was possible that she would have agreed to attend the coronation yes. and sit alongside Andrew Parker Bowles, Camilla's ex-husband, in the congregation. What do you think? Wouldn't that be interesting? I, I wouldn't have thought that she would pass up such an event, being such a vociferous member of, yeah. of the royal family, so proud of her sons being part of the royal family, and proud of the monarchy. I think she would have attended. I think she would have looked stunning. She would have outshone everyone, <laughs> yes. much to the anger of some. Um, but she would have done it with grace. Yeah. Because she would have moved on herself now. Yeah. And she would be in her 60s, yeah. would have found love, would have found a position in the world, and probably be in Ukraine right now mm. trying to sort the mess out. Paul, I know that uh, this is something that you never thought, like me, you'd no. ever say. But, but from Saturday, mm. Queen Camilla to you, you're yes. okay with that? Dan, it's, uh, it's a bittersweet moment for me because having lost our queen mm. so recently and being devoted to her, mm. being devoted to Diana and having been part of that history, mm. being part of that triangle it, all those years ago, I can never forget how cruel and unkind 
the king was to mm. his former wife. I can't forget because that. Because you saw it at close quarters. I saw it. And it hurt me too. I know how much it hurt Diana, but I have to move on. And people tell me, Paul, move on, move on. I, I am moving on. Mm. I'm moving on at a snail's pace because I do want the monarchy to survive. Mm. And I will have to accept this. I can't do anything about it. But I can never forget what has happened in the past. And this couple have a lot of history. Mm. And I think the people of our country realize that. They realize that there's a lot of baggage that comes with King Charles and Queen Camilla. Are we ready to accept that? But they're doing it in good faith too. They're doing it in good grace. And they are also looking towards the future like me. And one day, William and Kate. Mm. But people have discussed why. Why didn't Charles give the throne to William? straight away. Well, because he's waited all his life to do it. That's why. He wants his hands on the wheel. He wants to steer the ship. Also, I do think that the king has thought about his son, the Prince of Wales. He's thought, well, let him grow his family. Let him have a family life. And by the time his children are grown, William will be ready for the role. So I give it 10 years. Now, what, what about this astonishing breaking news mm. uh, from The Spectator mm. today? Cara Kennedy, mm. an up-and-coming royal reporter who we've had on this show, revealing that at a Balmoral drinks reception last year, uh, the Queen described Meghan as evil. No, I don't believe that down for a second. I knew Her Majesty well. I you don't think that's her style? It's not her style. It's not a word she would use. She may say difficult. She may say, I don't understand her, I'm confused by her actions, but don't forget, Dan, the Queen bent over backwards mm. to support this young lady coming into the royal family. She helped her on her first engagement. She offered Sophie, Reece, Sophie um, to mm. her to be her mentor. Uh, and and she, the Queen really did, she said to her, you can continue acting. Mm. If you want to continue your role as an actress, mm. then you can. Yeah. We'll do it anything. the point that by last year, the late Queen had realised yes. that Meghan had not only thrown all of those lovely opportunities back in her face, mm -hmm. it was more than that, Paul. By, by that point, the late Queen understood that Meghan was actually trying to destroy the British monarchy. Absolutely. And Meghan's presence within the royal family became toxic. And uh, somehow they had to remove that. It's, it was a, a cancer mm -hmm. growing in the royal family. and So you think the late Queen may have had a lot of reservations, which yes. she may have expressed, but she probably didn't use that term, Evil, that's your view. I never heard that word in her vocabulary. Never. How do you feel about this moment for Charles, a man who you have a long history with yes. too? Yes. Has he matured? Is he able to cope with what's coming this weekend? Well, I have to tell you that he does have quite a temper. You probably know that. Well, we saw that with the fountain pen, didn't we, in the well, days I've seen after it in the private. monarchy. I've seen it in the private. The days after the Queen's It thing. happened to me in private. And in, he lives in a world where everyone says mm. yes. And what kind of a person does that make you? Actually, Camilla is the only person that can mm. say no. And she will say no. She'll put, his hand, she'll put her hand on his shoulder and say, Charles, pull back. And I think that is her role for the future, is to be behind the scenes, not to be in front of the camera the whole time as queen. I think her role is behind the scenes to, to make sure, to keep him on track. And I think can she's he, the common sense can, voice. Can he be a king who protects and secures the future of the monarchy in order for a King William and Queen Kate he's a, to He's take a traditionalist. Throne. He's a traditionalist. You will see that in the coronation ceremony. He wants to retain all those old values, yet he wants another foot in the real world. And it's going to be a very difficult balancing act. As Prince of Wales, he could have his finger in every pie, in the environment, in politics, yeah. in everything. Which is a big risk. As king, he can't. He's going to have to sit on his hands and he's going to have yeah. to keep quiet. Otherwise, the monarchy is in jeopardy. So I think he's The stakes got to... could not be higher. No. This is a, a tectonic mm. plate mm. shifting yeah. time for our country. And will you pledge allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to our late queen and to mm. Princess Diana. So you won't do no, the I, Archbishop of Canterbury's special no, pledge of allegiance? No, Dan, I won't. The weekend? I won't. There's too much personal history in my world. 
don't shoot me down no, for not saying not. that. Because I, a lot of people feel the way that you do. I will accept him as king. I will, yeah. I will accept her as queen and we will we'll go yeah. forward across that bridge together and get to yeah. William and Catherine. But, yeah, but I, I can sense the emotion from you, Paul. You, yeah. you find this very hard, don't I know you? How because you, you know how difficult this would have been for Diana. I lived in a world with a very hurt princess, and I cannot forget those years, Dan. I can't. I have letters at home that, that are heartbreaking that says, Charles, you were so cruel to me. And I, he never loved her. He should never have married her. But then we wouldn't have William and Harry. He should have married Camilla in the first place, mm. and then we would be right. But if, if William and Kate were being crowned this weekend, they would be dancing in the streets. We would, it would be a joyous atmosphere. Look around you. It's calm. Everyone's here, everyone's camped out in the mall, everyone's having a good time, but is there heart in it? Yeah. And I defy anyone on the day not to think of the woman who is not there, the elephant in the room, the one woman who William will be thinking about, Harry will be thinking about, Charles will be thinking about, and even Camilla will be thinking Absolutely. about. Well, look, that's why I wanted you here tonight, because you are... Bless you. Diana's representative on earth well, now. I have to defend her memory and defend her honour. And I can't help it for the rest of my days. Paul Barrell, thank very you. good to speak. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much.